Hello everybody and welcome to the latest episode of Student Dave. Today we're going over the highly requested multi-object tracking. Multi-object, almost there, oh, multi-object tracking. Yeah, we did it. Um, we're going to be using, wait for it, wait for it, the almighty common filter. Yeah, everybody still loves the common filter. So uh, yeah, we're going to do that. Common filter and basically we're going to track multiple objects and that's not like just detecting multiple objects that's finding them getting giving them an identity and following that identity as they move around as they occlude each other as they pass in front of each other and maybe if they disappear for a moment from the tracker basically track multiple objects at once maintain that identity it's a very popular thing a lot of people like doing that on people and cars and stuff like that but we're going to do something a little bit more fun than people and cars we're going to track bugs but like always, I'm going to do the uh, explanation, then an example with the bugs, and then do the MATLAB implementation. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so in order to do multi-object tracking, you need multiple objects, right? Okay, there we go. There's two bugs. Now, this one bug is a little bit bigger than that bug. Okay, so what you're doing in any like image processing or object tracking, what you got to do is first figure out, again, what features are interesting, what features are salient and what features are relevant. And I explained that in my introduction to basic image processing. So you go ahead and look at that if you want. But um, basically what we want to do is we want to track these objects. So we got to figure out something about them that's unique, salient, and uh, relevant to our task, right? So we're interested in tracking where these bugs are going. We want to maintain the identity of each bug as they move around. So we're not so interested in this case about orientation, where they're, what, they, what their shape is, how many legs they have, which way they're facing. We don't care about that. We just want to grab their body. We want their center of mass. Something that's really good for all these kinds of things, we're just trying to get this uh, center of mass of an amorphous kind of structure, something with some kind of weird geometry or a blob. You do what's called blob detection. And what you're going to do in this case is, I'll show you something called the Laplacian of the Gaussian, of a Gaussian, or a mixture of Gaussians. And all that is, is applying a mass that has the shape of kind of like a sombrero, like a, a Mexican hat. So it kind of looks like this. All right, this is like this is like a magnitude, magnitude or whatever, or probability. And then this will be like the, uh, the one-dimensional direction. Of course, you'd make this in 2D, and I'll show you how that looks in 2D. But basically, that's the mask, and you would apply it over the image. So in this case, you might do some basic thresholding at first. We might like... Uh, you know, maybe look for things that are colored and just wipe out anything that's not colored and maybe blur that to make these guys a little more blob-like, a little more um, a uniform. And then we'll apply this uh, mixture of Gaussians or the Laplacian of the Gaussian or what's called a log uh, filter, a log filter to the image. Now, basically the idea is you want to fit the width of this, uh, of this uh, um, mask to the object size. And what that'll do is that objects that are about the same size as that mask will become very salient in the center, and then it'll die off to the sides. Basically, it detects any blogs of that particular size. What a lot of people do is they'll go, well, I don't really know the size of my object, so what I'll do is I'll vary this. I'll change the size of this mask. I'll go through scale space, and what that allow me to do is kind of find uh, at what scale do I have my best fit, you know, the greatest values. And that'll be a good way for finding out what size are the blobs of interest and grab out those blobs. But because uh, for the example, I know exactly what I'm working with and the bug sizes don't change. I just set a particular scale and then I apply that. And what that'll do is create these kind of nice little hills within the image space and do a very good job of getting the center of these, okay? So that's not exactly what we're interested in here. We're not interested in trying to do uh, blob detection, but it is very useful for a lot of things with amorphous structure. Um, and so I apply that because it seems like something that a lot of people might be uh, find useful. Okay, so once we find our bugs, right, we're going to have one and two bug, and we have a detection at the center of each of them, right? And so if this bug just hung out over here, just kind of did its thing over here, and this bug just kind of moved around over here, well, our task would be very simple. All we have to do is that, given the current position of where this bug's estimate is, look around him in some radius. And so if he goes over here, or maybe she goes over here, we go, okay, is that within the radius? Okay, take that point if it is, and make that the bug. And then what you'll do is you just do that iteratively as the bug moves around, and you'll always follow the bug. And you could do that for either bug, and now you've tracked them both individually and maintained that identity over time. Now, that's pretty good, but what if the bug disappears or the bug suddenly accelerates, right? So he's moving, 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 bam, he's over here. 
Or, say this bug comes over and crosses over this bug, and now you have no detection for that other bug. All these things can happen, and what it'll do is any kind of really basic estimate, like you know, looking for the nearest point, won't work very well, and you'll really quickly lose your bug. Um, so one thing people do is they'll apply like the particle filter or the common filter as a prediction of where that bug will go next. Rather than saying, I think he'll be around here somewhere, which isn't very directed, we'll go, well, with the common filter, like I applied in the two dimensions, he was going this way, and then so in the next frame, the common filter will predict not anywhere around here, but specifically here. And the same thing with this bug, if this bug is moving this way, the next frame, we're going to expect it to be here. And that allows us a very tight prediction on where the bug will be next. And it allows us to do, like we showed in the, the uh, two, 2D object tracking, that even when the animal disappears uh, or is occluded, it could keep tracking them regardless. And so imagine we have this bug coming down this way and this bug coming down this way. Oops. <laughs> and then this bug crosses over this bug. We lose our detection or we have two detections really close by. And then the bug goes here and this bug goes here. Well, What's going to happen is these two detection points are going to move, move, then we're not going to have any, and then we have our predictions, right? And our predictions at every step says he's going here, and the prediction for him is that he's going here. So we'll have our detection at the next point, and we have our prediction. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to assign those predictions to particular detections, or assign those detections to particular predictions. So again, this guy's coming this way, this guy's coming this way. We stop for a second and we go, well, what's the prediction for this guy? Well, his prediction is that he's going to be like here. And the prediction for this guy is that he's going to be here. And so we'll have a point of detection where we see them next. And we have a point of prediction where the common filter expected them to be. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to optimally assign them. Because those predictions should be closer to the detection for that particular bug than the, than the latter or than any other bug, we, should, we can use a cost function where the minimal distance is the magnitude of the cost and we'll apply something known as the Hungarian algorithm. Now don't get uh, scared away, that's just, and it sounds kind of intense, but uh, it's basically just saying what we want to do is optimally assign things based upon some cost function. So in this case we have bug green and we have bug red, okay? And then we have the detections one and two, right? And so we have our estimate of where we think the bug is going to be, and we have the detection 1 and 2. So say like this is detection 1, and this is detection 2, and then we have our estimates, maybe it's like here, and maybe we have our estimate here. This is for the green bug, this is where we estimate the green bug being, and this is where we expect the red bug to be. So those estimates don't be exactly accurate. That bug could have turned a little bit on the way, or maybe our detection is pretty sloppy and it's off a little bit. But if the two are still kind of in general tightly coupled, and we don't have very difficult situations occurring, this works really, really well. Um, well, I mean, it's all relative, but I mean, it works pretty well. So, um, there'll be some difference between them. Say there's like some distance 5, and then there's distance uh, 10, and this is distance, um, I guess it'd be 10, and this would be 5. And what the Hungarian algorithm will do is it'll figure out what is the best assignment between particular, you know, which, dis which detection goes best with the green bug, and which detection, detection goes best with the red bug. And then it will assign them in that sense. So this is called solving the assignment problem using a cost function or a cost matrices in this case. Uh, this would be our cost matrices. And we could do this for n number of bugs. We could do this for two bugs. We could do this 50 bugs. You could do it however many you want. And so the whole idea is we apply our detection algorithm. We detect where we think the bugs are at. We then get our estimates based upon the common filters estimates. And then we take those two, put them in this matrices, and figure out what is the optimal assignment. Then we can have some system where we go, well, if we haven't detected a bug for a while with this particular estimate, or they're all really far away, let's throw that one out. And if we have a new detection that's not getting any assignment, well, then let's say that's possibly a new bug. And that allows us to look for new bugs and get rid of bugs that have left the screen and things like that. But yeah, that's the general principle. You do a detection, you apply the, you do a, te a detection, <laughs> like the one and two, you apply the common filter to do the prediction, and then you then compare the two using some assignment assignment algorithm, like the Hungarian algorithm. Okay, so now I'll show you how I do this uh, with the bug video, a little quick example, and then the MATLAB implementation.